Right, Mayor. Okay, we'll try it again. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the workshop for the Village of Rodoso Council. If you'll join me, we'll have a moment of silence, and then we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I salute the flag of the state of New Mexico, the Zia symbol of perfect friendship among united cultures. All right. Good morning, everybody. hope everybody uh, had a Remembrance Day yesterday of D-Day. And just think about it, 78 years ago today, there were a lot of people dying for the freedoms that we take so much for granted today. And we were remiss. We didn't even really talk about it on the radio show on Monday, so I apologize. Uh, we have some special guests here today. So before we get started, we want to recognize our secretary over here, Ricky Cerna. Good morning. Thank you for being here. And then, of course, I want everybody to just go all the way to the left. And does that guy look familiar? <laughs> On the same row? Yeah, that's it. See, Secretary Cerna, go all the way over. Does that look like a do over dodge right there? <laughs> <laughs> so, if, if you would stand up, Adam, introduce yourself and where you're from, Adam Dodge. Uh, my name is Adam Dodge, obviously, cousins with uh, Tim Dodge. Obviously. <laughs> Mary. Mary Good morning. Mary Milet, uh, Department of Workforce Solutions. Thank, Thank you. you. Marcos. <coughs> Marcos Martinez, Department of Workforce Solutions. Thank you. And these guys did a presentation yesterday uh, over at EMU, and we appreciate you doing that. Mary, and the rest of them, I don't know, they may be my cousins too. Yeah, I know, there's a bunch <laughs> of them. You go somewhere, there's a Dodge here, Dodge everywhere. Roll call, please, Ron. Mayor Crawford. Here. Councillor Salas. Here. Councillor Letterman. Here. Councillor Hooker. Here. Councillor Coughlin. Here. Councillor Jackson. Here. Thank you. And we have, we a, have a quorum. And remember today, vote today. Uh, so yeah. do your duty if you hadn't already. Today's the day. We have some sample ballots here if you need to remind yourself or if you need any help, just I'm available. Item number one is discussion on resolution 2022-22, a resolution of the acceptance of the approval of fiscal year 2021. And re remember, this is just a workshop. There's no decisions made today. Good morning, Mayor, Councilors. This is just our annual um, resolution to accept the audit. At the actual meeting, our auditor, Chris Garner, will be in attendance, and he will be describing the results of the audit. Okay. Any questions from anyone? No. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll put that on uh, regular, regular items. items. And then I think I need to move back. So if you guys were, were going to do a little presentation on what you're working on, is that right? Well, whatever you're here for, you, you're welcome to do it now because I know you got other things you need to do. Uh, they, they got your back. Yep. That's kind of the way it works, doesn't it? When you're the, the yep. yeah, everybody shoots at number one, so it's okay. They pick the places to stay and eat. And yeah, that's good. Bigger decisions. Yeah, the big decisions. <laughs> um, well, thank you, Mayor, uh, Councilors, uh, Mr. Dodge. It's good to see you again. Um, again, Ricky Cerna, the Secretary, of Department of Workforce Solutions. We've been. Uh, 
we've been trying to answer the question everyone is asking over the last couple of years, and that is where are, where are all the workers? So we came to look for them here, um, and uh, not a whole lot of luck. We visited a couple a months ago, about a month and a half ago, really just to have a conversation with uh, uh, mayor, others, business uh, business owners, and and some other county officials, and really drill down into what some of the pressing needs are in terms of workforce. Um, what we're working through statewide is what we call a low workforce participation rate. And that's a, a number that's measured nationally and it's measured by state, obviously. It's the percentage of working adults, 16 and above actually, who are available to work that are either working or looking for work. And so in New Mexico, we see that number, that percentage uh, shrinking um, on the heels of the pandemic and, and on the front end of economic recovery for the state. And we, we've been uh, visiting with communities to essentially determine why. Why are fewer workers either working or looking for work? And it varies by community, obviously, depending on you know, the size, the types of jobs that are available, the skill sets of the workforce in those communities, et cetera, et cetera. And in those conversations, we've identified some projects that we think will help address some short-term needs, of course. But then uh, the conversation we had a month and a half ago also uh, lent itself to some more long-term pressing needs, not just for a community like the village of Rio Doso, but for so many others, especially those that are impacted for by fires recently. And that long-term need, obviously, is housing. And so um, we've, been, we've been asked by Governor Lujan Grisham to essentially pull together a solution for, uh, for, for local housing needs across the state, understanding that so many communities that were in dire need of housing are now, um, are now in an even more difficult position because of the fires. When you look at San Miguel, Mora counties here, and obviously we're, uh, we can expect that others will be impacted. I mean, we're still two weeks away from the start of fire season and we've already seen the state's largest fire in history. So we, we expect that other communities impacted will also need some long-term housing solutions. So we're working, um, uh, Mr. Dodge has, has initially come up with some ideas about you know, potential legislative changes that really allow for counties and municipalities to make local investments on their own property for the purposes of developing housing for the community outside of low-income housing options, right, which is important. And so we're, we're going to try and run with that and other, you know, barriers that we think might help provide some relief to cities, counties that would, would do that for the long term. So we're, we're working on that. In the short term, <clears throat> we, we worked um, here. We met last night with uh, business owners in the leisure, hospitality, and food service industry here in Rio Doso. And we, we, we focused in on them on, on the front end of the pandemic because they had tremendous job loss, right? So when we talked about uh, businesses that needed to <clears throat> shut down and, and open up in a phased approach, this industry was most adversely impacted. And so we've seen a lot of work recovery. And, and if you look at just the straight numbers, this industry is actually seeing the same number of employees now that it did you know, pre-pandemic. Um, but because there are fewer workers overall participating, that turnover that they're accustomed to seeing, right, it's becoming more difficult for them to replace those workers that are leaving on an ongoing basis. And we saw something similar in our conversations with the city of Carlsbad. And we, we launched a pilot there about a month and a half ago that was really aimed at increasing youth employment um, in the, the city of Carlsbad. And, and in Carlsbad, that was the case <clears throat> we saw primarily because the average household income in Carlsbad is really high relative to the rest of the state, as you can imagine. And because of that, youth workers were less inclined to work, uh, whereas in a community where the average household income is low, they might need to work so that they can help support their families. Well, we believe that a similar circumstance exists here in Rio Doso. <clears throat> and so what we would like to do is focus on increasing the number of youth here and the surrounding communities that are participating in the workforce. And so in our discussion last night with employers, <clears throat> we've committed to a 10-day project that will begin a week from, well, really Friday <clears throat> of this week, where we'll launch um, a, you know, an area-wide campaign <clears throat> that will essentially um, encourage youth to participate in a three-day training that will prepare them on behalf of employers to go to work for them in the leisure, hospitality, and food service industry. To get them there, we pay them to go through the training. We pay them to actually accept a job, and then the employers pay them to work. 
In parallel to that, we have conversations with the employers about what it is to be a good youth employer, right? And we know that in the conversation about employee engagement, that employees mostly quit their managers, not necessarily their jobs. And as you can imagine, that's the case in food service or hotel work. So what we'll do in parallel to all of that is we presented to business owners last night a program that we established that will also reimburse them for a portion of the wages they paid at new hires up to 16 weeks. For a full-time non-tipped employee, for example, reimburse them over $4,000 for 16 weeks of employment. So for a business that brings on, let's just say they hire 10 youth after we put them through this training. If they keep them for 16 weeks, that business could get more than $40,000 reimbursed to them for hiring those workers because they are training them to do that work. And so what we'd be doing, of course, is the campaign to get the youth here. We'd establish a campaign here in Rio Doso called Youth Workforce Strong that would encourage locals to also go out, right, and spend money locally because their youth are working in these businesses. And then, of course, we know that visitor spending is your bread and butter, especially this time of year. <clears throat> so we're hopeful that that workforce will help in that regard. And then we know that as businesses continue to ramp up, as they've been slow, this reimbursement for the wages helps them do that very quickly so they're not worried about cash flow challenges. And <clears throat> Then at the end of that three-day training on day four, which would be a couple Fridays from this coming Friday, we would facilitate that hiring event where all those employers would come back. They would essentially make job offers to these youth, and then we give the youth their money for taking that job. And, and by that time, we would already have them um, serve safe certified, um, safe serve certified for food handling, um, serve safe. We would already have given them their work permits. We would already have trained them on your basic you know, job skills and um, they're ready to rumble and hit the ground running. And so the, uh, we're hopeful we saw in Carlsbad, we put 50 youth to work in one day uh, where businesses came and just made them job offers after we finished the training with them. And we think that it was impactful. And, uh, and so the second area of priority for us um, at the feedback that we received here in the last couple of visits would then be shifting to retiree community in Rio Doso and the idea of training them to do some entry level professional business work, right? Office work, for example, here at the village or at the county or you know, at an insurance company or wherever. So we have a couple of ideas now. Again, those are short, ter short term solutions. We don't believe that the participation rate is gonna stay this low forever. We imagine that workers will slowly start to come back to work, but we hope that this will help you know, this community in this region. The, the one request that, that I was um, asked to represent, especially in discussion with business owners last night, and that is um, whether or not the village has the bandwidth or the resources to, to roll out some transportation services for these youth that, would, that we're hopeful will take jobs over the summer. We'll actually be doing some outreach to some of the surrounding communities at Capitan and Carizoso and Hondo to see if those high school students would also like to participate and work to see if there's transportation options for them to come into the village, but certainly to move about the village. Um, transportation is um, is not available, except for, I think we have one, you all have one Zia shuttle. Trans. Yep, mm -hmm. that helps, I understand, predominantly seniors. So we can talk more, Mayor, offline about you know what, what might make sense and what might be realistic, but certainly we have resources that might help support you know, ramping up in the availability of transportation. And we have resources that would help in transporting students from surrounding communities to come and work here during the summer as well. So um, it's been a pleasure working with you all. And, and, you know, if you think of anything that we can do by way of helping, you know, with your workforce, you know, challenges, we're, we're certainly uh, available to do that. And, you know, we'll continue to make this our mission throughout the state as we interact with um, uh, communities about, you know, what they need and, and where they need for this administration to support them. We appreciate you coming down and what you did yesterday. Could you touch briefly on uh, your certification or uh, for the 15-year-olds that, that that's available? You know, you have to have a work permit at 15, and they're going to be setting that up over at ENMU sometime? That's right, Mr. Mayor. Um, what we'll be doing is, um, so the Department of Workforce Solutions for the state is responsible for the administration of work permits, right? So if you are 14 or 15 years old, you need a work permit. And we learned last night that that's been a little bit of a, you know, a maze um, to navigate. So we'll be cross-training and certifying a significant number of staff over the next week so that, again, any 14 or 15-year-olds that participate in our training 
will walk out with their work permits, but for moving forward, we'll be sure that there's several of staff, several staff available, especially now that the school is out for the summer, we'll have staff available where the counselors might otherwise issue those permits to make sure they're available and, okay. and easy well, to obtain. We appreciate what you're doing. I mean, it's nice to see you guys being so responsive. I mean, you inherited a monster, I know. Uh, it was a bad time to be, get that position. So, anybody have any comments or if, questions? Mr. Mayor, I just had one. Uh, Secretary Cerna, as part of their training, as they're coming through and talking about 16 year olds and older, <clears throat> does that include a server's license as well, since that really ties into food and beverage and serving? So, they'll have their food handling um, certificate, is what they'll have when they leave. Um, I'm not sure what the circumstances are. You're talking about like alcohol servers. Right. I'm it's not 18. Sure. Yeah, it might be an 18 year old provision. Not to say that if we need help, for example, we partner a lot with the Restaurant Association. If that were to become a local need and we needed to hammer some out through a class, we perhaps could be, you know, coordinating that effort as well. And the only reason I bring it up is because of the changes in the liquor laws and so many of the beverages or restaurants that have just food and beverage limited license now are going to a full license right. and you usually have the server doing all of it yeah we if, if we learn that just facilitating the availability of that would be helpful then we could certainly try and get that done thank you sure. well I, I don't appreciate it. I know you have a full agenda I saw it this morning it actually took like 10 minutes to download from the internet so uh, maybe it was just a slow connection but it's June <laughs> Thanks for your hospitality. We appreciate being here. We'll be back, obviously, several times in the next few weeks. But uh, if there's great. anything you think of, I, I know the mayor knows how to get hold of us. Great. Have a great day. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Appreciate you guys. But it's nice they're working hard to, you know, work on these issues that we've been working on locally. But I want to call on the manager uh, to maybe discuss a little bit because in the meeting I was there yesterday, you heard people that, although they're in the community, they're not in the community. They, you know, we've worked diligently for a long time on workforce housing, Samantha, because um, we, we recognize that. We've worked on transportation, so the village, we have an agreement with Zia Trans. We are working with the reservation, the tribe. Uh, now then, we're trying to start talks with the county for them picking it up and, and also to encourage the, um, the city of Rudolph, the Downs, to stay active on that and, and make more frequent stops and also to... Uh, uh, cater more to the uh, hospitality industry because a lot of the the transportation services stop, uh, you know, around six o'clock in the evening, and a lot of the folks don't get off until twelve or later. And so those are some hurdles that we're working with. But this is uh, Samantha Mendez. She's our uh, um, community development community director. development director. She's been several things for a while, but she does a lot. So she can give us a quick update on what we're working on right now. Mayor, um, Council, uh, Secretary Cerna, um, you know, I, I want to give you a quick update on where we're at working on our housing initiative. There are some um, things, uh, hurdles that we've overcome, and we've been working very closely with the New Mexico Mortgage Finance Authority um, and uh, the Department of Finance Administration. Um, Rodney, if, if um, before the Secretary leaves, if you can have a brief discussion with them on those transportation um, opportunities that may be out there. And then we can, you know, see what we can do. We, we like to get things moving quick. <laughs> so, Rodney, if you could follow up on that. But, um, you know, we, we have uh, proposed a resolution to the, New Mexico, uh, to the New Mexico Municipal League to make some policy changes that allow us to actually create a housing enterprise fund here in New Mexico. Local governments are very restricted to, uh, uh, to working on housing. And it really restricts us to working on housing um, with low to moderate income people. And th those guidelines don't really meet ours or even Taos. And I would believe that Santa Fe's mm -hmm. probably um, experiencing the same type of issues when it comes to these resort communities. So um, the New Mexico Mortgage Finance Authority are, uh, is charged with administering the Affordable Housing Act. So um, they've actually made a determination and working with us to allow us to work with an 140% LMI. And what that looks like is, is for um, a family of four, that's right, about $90, $93,000 of income per year. So we've been working with them on a scope of work. Um, Samantha, I can't see that too good, so can you read that off if you don't mind? Yes, yeah, so our scope includes 
to create a housing enterprise fund to develop long-term rental housing in the form of 17 manufactured homes initially to be placed on a property acquired and held by the Village of Rito, so housing trust to be leased to the dis displaced families of the McBride Fire and long-term to be used for Rudoso's Workforce Housing Initiative, serving households up to 140% LMI in accordance with the Affordable Housing Act. So th this project, what we're looking at, we've identified a property, and uh, we're going to be um, uh, looking for approval on the, on the acquisition of that. Um, you know, the zoning certification we're working on should um, happen on, on June 10th. Uh, we're going to the uh, Planning and Zoning Board for their consideration. Uh, the adjacent property owners have actually reached out in support of the project. That's so, good. so it's uh, it's it looks good so far. Um, we're currently working with White Sands Construction under a CS contract for the site development, and uh, you know the preliminary plan should be in on June as well. We're already under contract for the um, transportation part of it, the permit. Um, DOT has given us a permit to access that property, a driveway permit. Uh, the design should be complete by um, um, July 1st and the site development by August 1st. So that, that's our goal is to start rolling in homes um, as of August 1st. Currently we're under RFP for both management services and then for a bit of, of the mobile homes so far we have or not mobile homes, but they're modular and manufactured homes that we're looking at. And, uh, you know, those bids are due right now. There's 14 companies throughout the state of New Mexico that are engaged in this process. And the reason we, we reached out and we've written our specs so that as uh, recovery starts to happen up north, if they just uh, want to piggyback off our contracts, those are already in place, and they don't have to go through those lengthy processes to, to try to accomplish that. Um, so far, when we look at it, let's go to the sources and uses of funds. When we look at the... When we look at the uh, sources and uses of funds, um, you know, there's local funds that the uh, mayor and council have uh, put into this of a million dollars. Um, the New Mexico Mortgage Finance Authority has actually came through an agreement, and I have a meeting with them up in Albuquerque tomorrow, and we're going to be sitting down and, and working both on that and the policy that governs the fund that we've created. Uh, they've actually came in with uh, $480,000, and then um, DFA, through uh, Secretary Romero and the governor, they made um, an appropriation of a million dollars. And uh, we have a legislative appropriation from Zach Cook. I don't know who he is, but I think he's sitting right next to me. Representative Cook put in uh, 980000 during the session. So, you know, I'm not going to go through um, every single one of them, but we're looking at, at three-bedroom option, two- and, and one-bedroom uh, options. And, uh, you know, I think those, those numbers that we're looking at that we plugged in are, are pretty high. Um, and as we go to, let's go to the next spreadsheet, Sam. Which one's that? If you look at those, those costs of development, if it's 180000 and we're just on this sheet, we're um, anticipating that the mobile home cost was was at one eighty. If we plug that figure in, and that's, that's probably like a three-bedroom, um, it, it shows that that uh, development cost or the purchase price and development is one eighty. Uh, we amortize that over 20 years, and then we, uh, you know, plug in the property management and other operational costs. We should be able to provide homes right for about $750. So on that, what would the square footage average be? Would that be a 1,200 square foot or? Um, they, they vary, Counselor. And, right. um, I well, but I'm just saying for a three-bedroom, what yeah. would that average be? Um, it, I, I don't recall off the top of my head what it is. Well, they have a decent-sized living area, and then the bedrooms were like 12 by 14s and some were 11 by 15s. And Yeah, yeah. most of them are 16 wides on the singles yeah. nowadays. So Okay, and then and 60 um, feet yeah. long. And some of the manufactured homes that we're looking at, you know, there's like uh, the dimensions were like 32 by 48 and, you know, so it just, there's a whole lot of different products out there. And until we get the bids in, 
Uh, we'll come back and we're going to be requesting a special meeting of the mayor and council, you know, sometime after um, our regular meeting, probably the week after that, so that we can sit down, um, approve the resolution that we're working on that creates uh, the housing enterprise fund. Right. That's what we're calling right. it. I know that. I was just curious of what size houses that yeah. are. And modulars then, would be going in there. And then you all be making the selections on which houses, which dimensions, and which properties we'd be placing them on. The first 17 go to, um, you know, the 1114 property, and then we're also working on a site development plan for 603 Meacham. So the, the whole, um, you know, uh, thing behind us is that when, when we look at these first 17 that are coming in, they're, they're really to try to uh, place the victims of the McBride fire in there first, and um, we're going to uh, be working with them to make sure that they're signing up with FEMA, and if, if they do qualify through FEMA, then the first 18 months does become um, a recoverable cost through FEMA. And if they don't, then we're going to start making that available to um, affordable housing for, you know, people that are at 140% LMI and below. And, um, you know, and not to exceed 30% of their annual income. And it, in addition to this, we're um, setting aside, and you can see there, we, we're calling it a housing initiative of 15% uh, um, of their rent that they pay goes into a, fir a home ownership program. And part of that home ownership program, they're going to have to go through some credit counseling and, you know, those type of, of uh, classes that will help bootstrap them into home ownership. So um, it, it's a... Uh, we're moving forward on our on our program, and I think we're creating a model that can be used up north once they start moving into recovery as well. And that's that's one of the biggest issues. Workforce housing is an issue that a, a lot of communities throughout the state of New Mexico have been facing. So, you know, working with a mortgage finance authority and DFA, I think if we can change the way that we're doing things, then we don't end up in that same old um, cycle of, of trying to get it done and not having any solutions. So. Mayor and Council, I'll stand for any questions. Secretary Senna, if you have any questions. We've also set the policies for this already, and we're going to be visiting uh, with the New Mexico Mortgage Finance Authority to make sure that we're not violating any um, statute, statutory authorities that we have. So we'll be covering that tomorrow. Tim. All right. Hey, Tim, I, I'm wondering on the 140% LMI, since the governor has now increased um, for child care up to 400% of poverty levels, is there any wiggle room in that uh, 140%? Uh, Mayor, Council, we can pose that question to the finance, the mortgage finance authority. Um, the authority is the one that uh, statutory has the, the authority to work on uh, the affordable and, and to administer the Affordable Housing Act. Anyone else? <clears throat> so a lot of these initiatives we've worked on for years, but looks like we finally have a shot to get one started. And then uh, NIMBY's not talking right now, so we're going to take advantage of all of that. So, okay, we'll move on then. Thank you, Samantha. And we'll get back with our regularly scheduled program. Uh, discussion or resolution, item number two. 2022-23, adopting a credit card policy according to requirements of Department of Finance and Administration. I didn't mean to run you off earlier, but... That's okay. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Um, Mayor, um, counselors, in conjunction with the submission of our fiscal year 2023 budget, DFA has required that we present a credit card policy to them that they can approve. Um, it has to be in conjunction with... Um, the payment card industry standards were that if we have credit card numbers that are stored, they have to su submit to red flag re regulations, and we have to make sure that we're storing them. All the payments that we take through ENCODE are stored within their software, so we are good on that. Um, so this is just bringing the policy up to council so that I can submit it to DFA. Okay. Anyone else? You have any questions? The one fifty fee. I, Thank you I guys. kind of recall that that was always the fee amount. Was so it? when you go through our website and you actually 
pay your uh, um, card there, um, that's when you get charged. Right. However, if you come in the door, we don't charge you. But didn't we always charge 150 when you did? We didn't. Okay. It was just on the online. Uh, <coughs> oh, maybe that's right. Okay. Mayor, um, on page two, um, it defines taking the credit cards over the phone. And then down on to page three, it talks about in person. In person, the second sentence there says um, staff is prohibited from writing or storing card information. On the via telephone, it just says that um, payments should be uh, the the only payments that can be taken over for uh, oh the information will be directly input into the credit card machine. I think in that one, we should also add something about the information should not be. Um, uh, the staff is prohibited from writing for yes, writing because yes, okay. somebody could hand write the card number and then input it into the machine. And then that, that piece of paper could fall, you know, whatever. Yes, I will add that. Okay. Anyone else? Oh, Mr. Mayor, just, these are just some editorial corrections under your, via fax or email line four, I believe the word was to have been Ben and it turned out to be B. Oh, okay. And so, and then the other one was under terminals, point of service. Um, it was G-O and then a hot, and then a space and F. I think you meant to say of. Oh, okay. And that's on line two. Okay. And that'll just clean it up. Okay, thank you. It probably went through spell check, but all those go through spell check. <laughs> Consent. Okay. Consent. You want to do consent? Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Item number three, resolution, discussion resolution 2022-24, resolution establishing fees and building evaluation chart. Samantha. Good morning, Mayor, Council Members. Um, this is an annual update to our fees that are established by um, ICC. Annually, um, they update them based on the consumer price index, and ours are set at 95% of uh, what their fee rate is at. Tim? Questions for? Nothing? That's good. Okay, you want to do uh, consent? Consent, I would recommend. Okay, get it, Ron. Okay, item number four, discussion on a memorandum of understanding between the Village of Rudoso and the County of Lincoln for the provision of regulation services of residential and commercial construction within certain specified areas of the County of Lincoln. And you had an addition with the map that was handed out. So hopefully you get to look at that. Yes, ma'am. The boundary map has not changed uh, from previous years. However, um, there will be a change from annual renewals to every four years. Um, with a 90 day out for either party and from quarterly reports of permit fees collected to annually. Okay, now was that, the, did the county request some of that? Yes, yeah. I met with um, the manager, uh, Pearson, yes. And uh, I think when this initially was uh, put in place, things were, relationships between the two entities were a lot different. Mm -hmm. And so, um, he saw that it was going well and a benefit to the community and wanted to just go ahead and make it an easier um, document for both entities to keep okay. in place. Consent for everyone? Uh -huh. okay. Okay. Item number five, discussion on third renewal agreement with the Ruidos Valley Chamber of Commerce for professional services for operation of both the Ruidos Visitor Center <clears throat> and the Billy the Kid Visitor Center. Adam, who's... Speaking on that one. <clears throat> we don't have any changes to this, and this is the final renewal <coughs> of the agreement. Were we going to, Mayor and Council, um, um, we're recommending a, um, approval of this one, and then uh, prior to the um, visit, um, funding, the Heritage Center um, will be uh, revisiting their contract. Oh, the, the yes. yes. Okay. And then we have an issue over there that we were discussing. I know that We've made provisions for the Billy the Kid Travel Center. Are we um, going to be discussing some options on that? We we have uh, um, that that's that's within the budget they have made. Um, 
the arrangements and they've okay. hired a person to take care of the uh, janitorial services for the facility. Okay. Consent? Yes. Good. Yes, sir. Item number six, discussion on resolution 2022-25, a resolution approving the acquisition of real property located at 1114 Meacham Drive, Rudos, New Mexico, and Lincoln County. Mayor, um, Council, uh, I would, uh, we do have an executive session okay. planned today, so we'll be discussing that. I would recommend that be a regular item. Okay. Item number seven, discussion on contract amendment number one with Cutler Repaving Inc. through resurfacing and curb line milling on Gavilan Canyon Road. Uh, Warrior Drive and Paradise Canyon Road, increasing the contract amount by $274,721.53, including gross receipts tax. And you can explain that one. Everybody probably already knows. Uh, this is due to inflation of cost of materials for the project. And the petroleum products. So. Yep. Okay. And so we'll leave that on like a regular. So, so Mayor, just a, a brief, you know, for additional information on that, Mayor Council, um, the escalators actually on the oil cost had, had gone up. So what we did, uh, we sat down with the cutlery repaving and we looked at the, at the milling and were able to uh, negotiate with the transportation and then the placement of it. A lot of the millings, not all of them, will be placed on, on the shoulder. So we're going to be doing some shoulder improvements. And we ordered uh, some additional tack oil so that we can you know, place the tack oil. Uh, place the millings and then uh, roll and compact to improve the shoulders okay. within the project. Be that, good. that ended up saving us on transportation costs and then helped us bring um, the project within budget. Okay. So we'll do that on Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Do we have to pay for that whole 274000 that comes out of our, our pot? Go ahead, manager. Um, Mayor, uh, Councilor, it, it eventually it, um, comes out of the total project cost. We, we had appropriated uh, $3.5 million for this project, so the, the escalator is actually covered within the allowable funds. Within the 3.5? Correct. Okay, Stop. thank you. You got it? Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay. Item number eight, discussion on contract with Cutler Repaving Inc. through the New Mexico Statewide Price Agreement, number 90-805-19-16759, for pavement resurfacing and curb line milling on the Upper Sudworth Roadway in the amount of $182,429.25, including gross receipts tax. And does everybody know what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay, and why we changed, because we initially... Uh, Josh was going to do that. There he is. Mayor, Mayor um, Council, if I could give up uh, more of an explanation yes. on this whole project. Our, um, our map project actually goes all the way from um, Grindstone and Resort all the way to the, the circle mm -hmm. on Resort. So um, Josh and his crews are going to be paving uh, that whole area, and then they're going to also be paving around the circle. Um, this project is actually taking from the circle all the way to Sudrath and Meacham and resurfacing that whole area. Um, right now, our, our cost estimate for that is at 182. Those are additional funds that Judy is recommending on, on where we would pay for that. But, um, you know, that we actually, um, by Josh not paving that area, that adds about 40000 that will be going back into it um, out of Josh's and then Cutler has agreed to do the um, the scarification, um, the milling um, at no charge. So, you know, there there is a, an increased cost, but we should be able to get it done um, a lot quicker and address more area. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Tim, are we on hold right now with the fire restrictions on paving? No. Um, Mayor Council, um, um, the mayor did issue an executive order giving um, staff a direction that any ongoing construction projects, Continue. if they um, do have uh, any type of fire risk, that they have to visit with the fire department and with Dick Cook, and we would come up with a mitigation plan for that. And so essentially we're permitting projects to move forward as long as they can demonstrate that they can mitigate any hazard that may exist. Water, fire suppression, everything. That's, anybody can do that. 
A contractor can do it, whatever they come in, they need to visit with Dick, the fire department, uh, whether it's thinning or anything that's going on in the village, they have to come in and get a special permit so that we know that they do have the equipment, they do know what they're supposed to do, and then we know where they're doing it. Because there are, they have been handing out tickets, according to the lieutenant, uh, people that have been operating without permitting and, you know, with chainsaws. Uh, we had a welder, guy welding. <laughs> uh, um, so, you know, there's still those things that we're doing. But, yes, any, perm any work that would continue that would help alleviate or, can, you know, a fire uh, suppression, endangerment. Yeah, and then also with work. So, um, Mayor, Council, you know, um, the mayor has issued an executive order, and we in intend to take, um, you know, those type of, of options that we're developing now, you know, the unintended consequences, and then work that back into the ordinance and then bring it forward to the council for consideration. So that, you know, moving forward, um, we've thought through those. And, you know, after we started seeing it, it just wasn't right to start stopping all the projects. For instance, P&M, um, right there by the Verizon stores, putting in a new um, you know, pole. pole, and they had to be welding and, and whatnot. We couldn't just stop progress. So we had to try to consider how we can mitigate the hazard. So um, the fire department, forestry, and, and you know, we'll be taking a look at that you know how that um, ordinance affected the various industries, then coming back and making recommendations for a permanent solution. Um, my question is on the circle: Will the curbing that's on there be replaced or just repaired? Uh, Mayor, Mayor, Councilor, um, right now um, we're going to be evaluating that and then making a recommendation on it as well. Okay. Uh, right now, um, this project does not include the curbing or any of the sidewalk in the area all the asphalt correct and um, the mayor I believe is going to be appointing a, a committee yeah. a steering committee for that the area redevelopment of that area we no, we don't have all the names we uh, right now only have four okay uh, that have agreed to do it and then I got several that are thinking about it but I didn't really want more than seven I'd like to have seven right. so, so if you've got anybody in that area that's interested so, so with that, until we engage them, we really didn't want to invest any any money in, in the actual curbing or changing sidewalks or things like that. We would like to engage them and then come back with a recommendation. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Regular. Sure. Uh, item number nine, discussion on contract amendment number one with White Sands Construction, Inc. through Cooperative Educational Services, CES, on the Horton Complex building. Renovations project located at 237 Service Road and decreasing the contract amount by $4,968.30, including gross receipts tax and requesting an extension of 15 six calendar days. Rosie, Mayor, Mayor and Council, on, on this one, one of the things that um, really um, instigated us this whole process that we're talking about right now is that. Um, during the session, we received an additional $3.5 million. Mm -hmm. We had already put in a substantial amount of money into the project. So what we're, what we're doing with this is, is we're going to be removing some items and then adding some items back in. And the items mm -hmm. that we're adding back in are going to help us to expedite or continue to move forward with the uh, dispatch center and the court. And then um, taking some of the items out will allow us to move forward with design and then we're going to be eventually coming back in and adding items back in. So instead of us having to put more money in in the project <laughs> of general fund dollars or local dollars, uh, we're, we're using this strategy so that we can get the design on the way. It'll save us about three months and then uh, be able to change order back in these items and get the, the phase two of the project or phase three, whichever you want to call it, to complete the the public safety uh, portion of it um, and get that design and moving forward. So with that, I've asked uh, Zeke uh, to, you know, look at those changes and what it would take to accomplish that. Good morning, Mayor, Council. Mm -hmm. um, just uh, briefly, uh, what elaborating on Manager Dodge's comments there, we, we put together a, a spreadsheet here um, that shows that what we're taking out of the contract um, currently Basically, uh, we're going to credit the landscaping, um, asphalt paving in its entirety, uh, and, and the fencing, um, which is all included in the contract currently. Um, taking those three components out of the project now 
uh, frees up the funding to uh, do the the ads which are uh, on the spreadsheet as well, including the phase two design um, and some other uh, interior renovations uh, or revisions, I guess you could call them, um, that we've been working on as well on the interior. So um, I, I stand for any questions, everything. I think I submitted everything to Ron. He's included in the agenda there. So um, if you've got any questions on any particular item, I'll, I'll be willing to answer, answer those. I well, appreciate you guys being flexible and working with us on this. Yes, sir. Anybody have any questions? I do not. No. Okay. Thank you very much. Do you want this on consent or regular? Consent. Okay. Consent. Mayor, Crawford. Been, Mayor Crawford? Yes. On the two Cutler items, seven and eight, were those uh, both Re regular? Those were both regular. Okay. Thank you. Item number 10, discussion on uh, MOU between the Village of Ruidoso as fiscal agent for the Lincoln County Ruidoso DWI program and lend a hand to provide funds in the amount of $30,000 for prevention specialist services for the DWI program. Yes, sir. This is a normal yearly contract with Linda Hand as a prevention specialist. Uh, we do it every year. Mm -hmm. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. You guys so want to? did go up a little bit on her salary because she's taking over a couple more small jobs. Okay. But, uh, but that's all within the the, uh, the, the budget. The specialist is required by DFA. We have to have one on board, and if we don't, we don't get our money. So, right, it's a deal breaker. Just just her being there and with that certificate <laughs> is worth quite a bit to us. And about three years ago, Region Nine made the proposal they were going to get somebody certified. And uh, Maynard is, you no, know, I forgot who it was. She was, she was just retired teacher. And I thought that process, yeah, that was going to uh, take the place of Linda Hand. Whatever happened that, with that uh, pursuing? It kind of fell through. They still can't get, they are still looking for somebody that they can put through all the training and stuff to get that certificate. And it takes about two years once you find somebody that's willing to do it and wants to do it. Right. It'll take them about two years to achieve that. So uh, Linda was going to re retire this year completely. Right. And I talked her into going two more years with us. And hopefully Region 9 will come through and find somebody that that can replace her because she is ready to quit. Right. Uh, I, I don't know how that's going to turn out, but they are still working on it. Tim. Tim consent? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, <laughs> item number 11. <clears throat> Discussion on contract with Hope Floats Addiction Counseling, LLC, to provide individual and group domestic violence offender treatment in the amount not to exceed six thousand dollars including gross receipts tax this is last year we had a contract with hope floats with uh, the grant money that we got refunded mm -hmm. and they have not spent as much as we hoped but they do have a couple of people that they are working with at the present time for that money. Uh, I lowered it to 6000 this year because if, well, this treatment program, we had trouble figuring out what we're supposed to do and how to do it and how, what would make it feasible under the, under the contract that we have. And 
DFA has loosened up the requirements for treatment because they want to get more people into treatment. So I think it's going to go a little smoother this next year. Uh, we kind of know what we're doing now and, and we know a little bit more about how to achieve the goals that we set for ourselves. And, but I lowered it to 6,000 initially because I am planning on getting another, I mean, I'm gonna have to send back some money this year because we didn't spend quite as much as we thought. And I'm planning on getting that back in September. And I'm going to put that against treatment, most of it. So this will be increased if they use this 6,000. If they get started on it and get, get to using it, then I'll give them part of that grant money again this year. Okay. Does this include the next item, too, in the same funding process? Yes. Okay. What was the previous amount? What did you reduce it from? Was it 10000 the initial, the initial you from, from the grant from last year for Hope Floats was 10000 Yeah, okay, that's what I thought of. Okay. All right. Anyone have any questions? I think you explained it. Consent. Consent? <coughs> yes. Okay. And then the next item is uh, with Capitan, or the way the Secretary Capitan? Capitan Therapy and <laughs> Behavioral Health LLC to provide individual and group domestic violence offender treatment in the amount not to exceed six thousand dollars. So uh, that's the same song, second verse. Uh, yes, sir. This we gave them fifteen thousand last year, mm -hmm. and they have spent. They have had a an ongoing group therapy with probably between, depending on how many show up that week, between three and six people for the last several months. And we're gonna turn in an invoice probably in the next few days for all of that, which is hopefully will amount to quite a bit of money. But I did the same thing with them that I'm doing with, with Hope Floats. I'm initially giving them $6,000 and if they start working on that in July and start spending it, and it looks like they're going to be successful with their program, then I will increase it out of the out of the grant money that I get in September. Okay, Mr. Mayor, will, Mr. Henson, will that be enough to make up the shortfall? I know we're and you're anticipating an unknown, but I'm just asking, only because of the base amount. If it needs to be higher or not, that's my question. Will you have enough in your reserve capital? to fund a shortage if you need it I with should, these two programs. I should have, yes. Thank you. Okay. Consent? Yes, sir. Yes. Item number 13, discussion on memorandum of understanding between the Village of Ruidoso as fiscal agent for the Lincoln County Ruidoso DWI program in Region 9 to provide funds in the amount of $42,000 for the Protecting You, Protecting Me prevention classes in the schools in Lincoln County. Yes. Mayor and Council, this, this is the same amount that we gave them last year. Uh, I, I met with them about three weeks ago, and because they didn't, weren't able to do what they said they were going to do as far as getting a preventionist started, I didn't feel like we could increase their money this year uh, and they were okay with that so they uh, they do have well our current secretary of our DWI council is uh, she's serving as secretary and she is also the one who presents the protecting you protecting me in the schools she put together and, and did a pretty successful maze of life this year in person. Uh, and she does several other just uh, health fairs and 
whatnot for us, and that, that's actually what we're paying for with okay. Region 9. Okay. Consent? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. 14. Discussion on memorandum of understanding between the Village of Ruidoso as fiscal agent for Lincoln County Ruidoso DWI program in the town of Carrizoso and administrative authority for the Carrizoso Police Department for DWI enforcement and overtime reimbursement costs. This item number 14, 15, 16. 14 is for Capitan. Uh, 16 is for Ruidoso Police Department. 17 is for the um, Lincoln County Ruidoso. Um, and then uh, I believe 18 also. Yes. And 19. And 19. Okay. Is this Lieutenant or you, These Mr. Hanson? For DWI overtime yep. and uh, various amounts. Okay. Consent. 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 All the way down. Okay. Okay, so we'll move on to item number 20. Is discussion on joint powers agreement between the Village of Ruidoso and the Board of Education for Ruidoso Municipal School District, District regarding placement of school resource officer at the Ruidoso Middle Schools. Thank you, Mr. Hansen. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sir, Council, Lieutenant. This, this will just be a renewal of the contract for our school resource officer. And there hasn't been any changes. Okay. And Mayor. I know um, you maybe are the lieutenant, I mean the chief for sure, and the sheriff are going to be on the 13th, um, going to be at the Republican Party. They've requested an update just on the active shooter and so and all of that stuff that's going on with all the recent circumstances. Okay, do you want consent or regular item? Consent. 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 I think, uh, Mayor. Oh. Yes. I, I'm sorry. Uh, what about, is there something that we, I, I know that, um, you know, we're doing this in a public meeting, but, and we need the schools uh, to be a part of it. But what about for the parents? Um, you know, they don't go to, a lot of them won't be going to the Republican Party. Um, well, they can, I mean. Um, but what, you know, there, there's a lot of questions out there. Uh, now that this has happened again, and I was just wondering, is there something that we can do with the schools to get the parents to know that, you know, our police department, I, I was listening to the radio and y'all did a really nice job there um, talking about it, but is there something that we can do to um, let the parents know that we have those trainings and our police department has the backup of the sheriff and all the things y'all were talking about yesterday. I, I just think it's really important. It might alleviate some stress and calm everybody down a little bit. Well, we've certainly reached out to them already. Uh, the reason okay. we're doing it at the Republican Party, they reached out to us to sure. ask if we would come do it. So. You know, we've put it out there. I mean, uh, we have the same discussion every day of the week and here in Rhode Also, is how do we communicate with the public more efficient and better? We're already doing those things. I know I've spoken with our PIO uh, about putting together some stuff, uh, you know, because school's out now and there's going to be a lot of preparation between now and opening day. And I know we have summer school and all of those things, but um, it, we can... Uh, maybe lean on uh, Councillor Hooker to to reach out to the school department, school, and uh, through his connection, and see if we can't do something with them. Because um, we have been in contact with Dr. Bickert and a few of his folks on this already. But yeah, anything that we can do, we would. We certainly want to do to ease ease any um, fears or uh, anxieties. Thank you, and Councillor, if I may, real quick. I don't know if it was mentioned yesterday on the radio, but part of our active shooter training that we do also includes civilian training at the schools with the staff there, not just for the responders, but also for the staff that work in the schools. So uh, some of the, I mean, they will be able to participate in that. Uh, the staff will. And this is also all the schools in the county. 
you know, we, we've done stuff in Capitan um, and Carrizozo and, and Hondo, I know. And so those are things that we're just renewing and making sure that everybody's on the same page, you know, make some, sure somebody vital didn't retire and we don't know about it. So it's a good point. So if it comes up, and then we'll just get back with Councillor Hooker to see if he's able to set anything up. And right now we just still have the one resource officer, uh, Sal. Correct. Okay. So you want to talk about this one, or do you want to consent it? Consent. Consent. Yeah. And I know a lot of it is just informational, you know, but people just need to know. Um, and, and I honestly haven't had any calls on it. I know uh, the chief and I have been talking about it, and then with the Uvalde thing, because of COVID, a lot of it went on kind of a hiatus. And then when Uvalde and something, I forgot what the one, something happened before, and it's a shame that they get so many of them, I can't keep them in order. But he had reached out to the sheriff and was uh, talking to the other uh, police departments in the area and was getting things set up. And then Dr. Bickard uh, had asked that we, you know, continue once in school was getting close to being out, that we would work on it in the summer months and then be ready to go at the first of the season for school. Well, and I know I get, I get comments from parents wanting to know specifically what will happen in the event of, and, you know, I explained to them, it's kind of like a football team isn't going to give the playbook to the other side. Um, there's certain things that have to be kept in house, sure. um, because otherwise you get these people with ill intentions knowing exactly what's going to happen. Um, and then they've got a, a backup plan to our backup plan. So, um, that's one of the frustrating things from the public side. However, they do have to, um, be aware and understand that, uh, law enforcement and the schools aren't going to say, here's exactly what's going to happen in the event of. Uh, some kind of event. Good point. Okay. Uh, then we have item number 21, discussion on joint powers agreement between the Village of Ruidoso and the Ruidoso Downs Racetrack regarding providing security for special events for the 2022 season. Lieutenant? And that's, again, just a, it's a prior agreement that we've had. It's just a renewal that if they have special events and the racetrack specifically requests us for security if they can come down and do that and generally uh, it's a lot of it is volunteer basis and then it's the paid overtime or whatever is required at that point and they haven't done those in a while but yeah. if they do it's usually yeah we're hoping that we need it I, i'm really glad that they got good internet service in oklahoma i didn't think they had tv or internet service that's why the population <laughs> boom was yeah, i see. But you were hoping that they didn't. I know you. <laughs> Is that what it was, oh, Philip? No. Mm -hmm. Consent. 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 Yes. Susan probably has better internet service than we have here. Yes, that's true. Yes, sad but true. Item number 22, discussion on jo joint powers agreement between the village of Ruidoso and the Ruidoso Jockey Club regarding providing security special events. Same, Same. song. Thank consent. 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 Item 23, discussion on agreement between the Village of Ruidoso and the Humane Society of Lincoln County for the safe and humane control of animals and the protection of the citizens of the Village of Ruidoso in the amount of $80,000. And I believe this was just a renewal also. I think there was an increase of $10,000, but I think that was operating cost increase that they okay. had or requested. So I know once they requested 90000 and then we did 70. I believe we were at 80,000 last year. Were we? That's what I was trying okay. to remember. I think we in our yeah, we were. We, they raised it to 80,000 last year. Okay. Mayor, with all these consent items, I think you're going to need an extra bottle of water. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, well, well, we have Mayor, to dole them the, out. On this one, I would like to invite the Humane Society to come and do their presentation. Um, I believe that was... If it's not part of the agreement, it's, it was kind of like a verbal agreement that once a year they come in and give us an update on what's going on. Okay, so do we want to put this on regular item or have them present at um, 
Mr. Mayor, I would just have it as a regular item and have them, have them talk about it. Tell a little more exposure to the community as well. That's what true. What they're doing, what what it's for. Because they've had some big change-ups with having had their mortgage relieved and, and now it's operations and all of that. Okay. All right. Is that good with you, Councillor Coughlin? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, item number 24, just, and if you'll reach out to Abel. To Abel. Item 24, discussion on assignment of lease agreement between Cliff Rowe and David Stepp for land lease uh, for hangar P6 with the Village of Rudoso and the Sierra Blanca Regional Airport. Austin, good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Do you guys have any questions regarding this agreement? Nope. Pretty nope. standard. Okay, but you are working on uh, some sort of a program where they can figure out how to... Um, Put in like a restroom or water and all that stuff coming up with that. Yes, sir. Okay, so we want that consent. And then uh, I want you to go ahead and put together some more names of people you want out there because I've got a couple and we'll go ahead and get that com ca um, council committee, whatever, going. Item number 25 discussion on task order C attachment to professional services agreement between the village of Rodoso and Armstrong Consultants Inc. for further description of services of engineer to reconstruct runway 1230 and reconstruct taxiway B and connector taxiways. 1230 is the one that runs east and west? The north, north, south. north and south. North and south. Okay. Okay. What do you guys want? Consent. 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 And I like to think that who was it that did all the trimming of the weeds? The Parks and Rec or, or uh, you guys? It was or Marty's team. The, the water guys? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, I appreciate those guys. So we're reaching out. We're changing that. We're, the leaseholders are supposed to take care of their own stuff. And then we'll just uh, send Dick out there to get, or have him give them a warning and then push it through the process because that's under their responsibility. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item number 26, discussion on sub, uh, grant rece sub recipient grant agreement with the State of New Mexico Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management for fiscal year 2020, building resilient infrastructure and in communities brick to update local multi-jurisdictional multi-hazard mitigation plan in the amount of $73,500, zero cents. So Mr. Chief. This is, Mr. Mayor and Council, this is our grant um, through Homeland Security and FEMA to update the multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation um, plan that we have here. It's due to be renewed by July of next year, of 2023. So we actually put in for this, started the process of this grant process back in 2020. We were told we were going to have the money by July, June, January of 2022, and they're just now getting us the funding notice right now so we're going to be a little bit behind the ball we'll have to have do an rfp for the contractor to put this together and then we'll have some public meeting and cooperation meetings and it should move pretty quick i mean because we already have the plan in place it's just going to be updating changing names and maybe a couple little things that need to be changed on it but it'll be a pretty pretty easy process i believe so that's what this funding is for is to cover the cost of the redoing the, the grant process the mitigation plan Okay, does everyone understand this? Yes. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Consent. 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 Okay, thank, thank you, you, Chief. And then uh, we'll be getting, hopefully, a really good update on uh, the, uh, what do they call the fire? I can't ever pronounce it. Senegita fire. Senegita fire. Or are we going to, I have to say it real fast, Senegita fire. Yep. Uh, yeah, so yeah. are they going to have an update on that today where we know I know we have the uh, top one equipment and top three JWs on it. So, yes, sir. So, so as of last night, the, the update that I got last night was um, it was at 56% containment last night. They have um, three hand crews on it, three, three, type, three, hel three type one helicopters. I mean, three type two helicopters, one type one helicopter, and the type three team is actually running the scene. Um, the type three team with JW McCoy, uh, they're going to be actually leaving, heading out probably by Friday um, and just turning it back over to Mescalero because they're figuring they'll have it 
pretty much contained by the complete containment by that point in time. Can you give us an update on the helicopter agreement that we had and the one that we have stationed at our airport? It had the, the helicopter agreement that we had with the National Forest Service is to station a helicopter in the Rio Dosa area for severity for the surrounding area during the fire season. We have had one out there sent for about a week now, and they actually were helping with this fire. They're going to so they've been actually stationed over at Mescalero by the Big Game Lodge. They're coming back after the airport today to sit there for any fires that break out. They're going to be able to um, drop buckets of water on the fires, little fires and stuff, to try to help mitigate some of the spread of quicker fires. So it's a, it's a really good deal. The last few years they've actually been stationed up at Mescalero, and there's been some issues with Mescalero having a helicopter up there. So we signed an agreement with them to stay out at the airport. And is it true that actually one of our local pilots spotted that fire first and called it in? I believe so. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which one, but I, I know that was one of them. And, they're, they're, and then when they were out there, they found a couple other fires mm -hmm. out there. that were They were all lightning f strike fires, Mr. Mayor. And there was a total of four little fires that they found. Two of them were a little bit bigger than the other two. But they, uh, this is the last one that they're working on right now. So yeah. if I may, along those lines, Mr. Mayor, it probably would have been a question for Austin, but Chief, I know you can answer this. Uh, in going back to your statement, uh, it was a local pilot that, that observed the fire. Is there somebody in the, I don't know, it's not a tower, but in the airport terminal that's monitoring the radio during certain hours of the day? And is there a remote access, i.e., that person goes to the bathroom, they go do something? How do they, how does that work? So we, we actually have, um, I know we, we just got some updates in our radios out there, actually upgrades, so... So the, the firefighters have access in their vehicles to the radios, the ICOM radios that the pilots talk on. Our FBO has it. We actually have put radios in the housing area, housing quarters now, so they can, they can be home at night out there basically and in their quarters, and they can hear the pilots coming in and out as well. So then do they get, the furtherance of that, do they get training this fireman sitting there and somebody talking airplane airplane language, are they going to know how to answer? And that, hey, I'm supposed to answer this. Yes, they do. It's part of our training. They they know how to talk to airplanes, how to respond to airplanes, what they're talking about. So all that is built into everything that we're training out there. And yeah, so. everybody know why he's asking. <laughs> No, no. Why am I asking, Mr. Mayor? Uh, because they, we didn't, we weren't picking up so what we were told, so they called Albuquerque Tower, and Albuquerque called and okay. <coughs> spotted that fire. Okay. Uh, that's why we know. And we're not trying to call anybody out. It's I'm just, not. Now he is. I'm not either. Yes, I'm is. just asking. Is there a follow-on? How it's does it work? Face of power. You just right. and, and, and one one, th one thing that we have done, and and the, and at the, with the mayor and the the village manager, we have actually hired a temporary employee for the airport to sit in the office on especially our busy days Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday Monday to help monitor the radios take care of customers as well so we will have additional help during that time as well cool and uh, we've you know everybody has trouble getting employees so that what we've reached out and actually they reached out to us was part-time uh, retired people that want to make a little extra money with inflation and whatnot and just sheer boredom um, that they've offered, so we were able to put, I guess, one on, Michael Dudman. Yes, he starts Thursday. Thursday, good, good, okay. We cool. really appreciate and that. And then there are times that uh, the guys might be out dealing with, both of them tied up with a, a plane, and they may not be able to hear the radio, so that, you know there, there may be a little bit of disconnect there occasionally. We try to have them have their radios on there, but if you're around a hell, hell, airplane or something with their engines going, they're not going to hear anything. Sure, so. absolutely. Yep. All right. Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. gentlemen. Yes. Uh, Eric Boyd, a number 27 discussion on joint funding agreement 22 RGJFA 23 with the United States Department of Interior of the Interior, United States Geological Survey and for the operation of USGS stream flow and precipitation gauges with the village cost share of $54,189. Uh, Mayor Crawford, counselors, so this is our annual agreement for our obligations to pay for five stream flow gauges and one precipitation gauge. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Straightforward consent. 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 Okay, number 28, renewal agreement with John Shoemaker and Associates Inc. for professional hydro hydrological 
Water Supply and Water Rights Consultant Services and Task Orders RFP, number 2021-007P-08, RFP number 2021-007P-09, and RFP number 2021-007P-1010, and the amount not to exceed $50,000, no cents, $25,000, no cents, and $50,000, uh, no sense, respectively, including gross receipts tax. Uh, Mayor Crawford, councilors, so uh, this is the first renewal, and then our um, on-call task orders uh, with John Shamir and Associates. So, uh, Roger Perry um, is our, our primary person that we work with there, and then um, Zach Weathers is the field technician that um, is, is replaced Sherry um, Fritz last year when she retired. Um, but uh, they're an important as asset for us in the water utility. Um, they do all of our consultation for helping us know where to place pumps and motors and wells and design work for wells, um, our water models, monitoring, and then water rights uh, um, consultation for legal um, hearings for transfers. Questions, anyone? Mr. Mayor, I just had one, Eric. Do we have any, just for information, do we have any real uh, contentious water rights issues of a litigious nature currently or not? Yes. Can you say that without, oh yeah, I thought he was going to get a big smile. <laughs> of course we do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, so um, we, have, uh, we have one issue that is going to hearing for a water right transfer from the racetrack to the village of Rudo. So, no. um, so we, yes, we do. And this is all in task order when used? Yes. Okay. Consent? Consent. 29, discussion on first renewal agreement with Henninghausen, Olson, and McCray. LLP for professional services and water rights attorney for the village of Rio Doso and task order RFP number 2021-012P-02 in the amount of $80,000 including gross receipts tax. Uh, so Mayor Crawford, counselors, uh, this is the first renewal with our uh, water rights attorney. Um, if you notice in the name, there's now McCray as a partner and that is Mitchell McCray. Um, he is um, starting to kind of be onboarded for, with the village's uh, portfolio. So A.J. Olson is still the lead attorney for us, but Mitchell is starting to help. And so um, when A.J. retires, we'll have somebody that can transition into our, our primary um, attorney. Uh, A.J. has not expressed that he's retiring, but um, I think that he's preparing for it by having Mitchell participate. Uh, I've put the amount at $80,000. It's the same amount that we had last year. We didn't even use close to that, but that's just in preparation for a possible hearing. Okay. Consent? Consent. Okay. Item number 30, discussion on third renewal agreement with Yay and Associates, Inc. for professional engineering services for dam improvements, compliance, and planning projects for the grindstone and alto dams, RFP, number 2019-008. Yes, sir, Mr. Randy. Mayor, council members, this is uh, the third and final renewal for Yane Associates. They're currently working on the, the dam projects, literally. No. <laughs> and uh, what they're doing is they're trying to finalize the last two projects that they're working on. One is the, uh, the conduit and vault inspection. And then the second one is the emergency spillway and the uh, concrete repairs. And so I'll stand for any questions. Is that the only hat you wear? Uh, almost. Okay, almost. I was just wondering. <laughs> He's always got that sucker on, no matter what color his shirt is or <laughs> whatever. I know they die hard. Sometimes you got to go with what you know. Yeah. <laughs> So the, See, I stick with them through the thick and the thin. Yeah, so. I know. 
Ron's in the same boat over there. He's got a whole boatload of crappy uh, Raider stuff. <laughs> he's even got a tattoo on his back now. Yeah, on his <laughs> backside. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I've just heard about it. So, Next all right. Does anybody have any real questions? No. No consent. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Discussion on amendment number one with uh, WSP USA Inc. for additional professional engineering services for bridge replacement projects in the amount not to exceed $47,523.11. Yes, ma'am. Yes, good morning, Mayor and Councilors. This is a change order for the uh, additional survey work that uh, we're needing to get um, the data on the actual um, easement or for the easements and also for the area, um, identifying the area that we need to turn in for, um, like, the EA work that needs to be done, the environmental assessment that FEMA has to write. So in the initial um, scope of work, what I'm finding out and what I'm learning is there's four types of surveys, and the basic surveys are if you don't identify additional or a, a higher level of survey, then they'll do the basic. And in this case, honestly, I, uh, this is probably an oversight on our part. We should have looked at that a little bit closer. But now that I'm learning the lingo, all this Sue DLB dash C. Um, well, shouldn't we, when we're putting out an RFP for this, shouldn't we be including what we want? You know, we learned that when we were doing the other surveys, you know, that we did with uh, what was the first engineering group, H2M Hill, CH2M yeah. CH2 Hill, and then we went through it, and then we had to do the the modified, the historicals, and all the different things right. up there. So I would think that we, w we would include that in our RFP, that we'd be very succinct on what we're right. asking. Right, and like I said, the, the language that they're calling out here, um, it, I guess what they consider is a basic basic survey we're finding out is not what we were needing mayor, with that mayor um council i did go back after you know the agenda review mm -hmm. of the mayor um i did go back and, and visit with karen and you know when we we look at the whole process when we set up an rfp you know we don't have the level of expertise in-house so we go through a process that's called ptab it's a professional technical advisory board so we send an rfp to an engineer that is on a volunteer basis with the organization, with the PTAB organization, and they help us draft that scope of work. So in, in drafting that, they just called out a basic uh, uh, survey, and then as the company got into it, they, they actually realized that they need more um, detail in it to, to finalize the plans. But our, so. we, we have an engineering firm that is watching environmental concerns and all those things like that. I figured that they would have been brought in on this since it's part of I mean I know it's the bridges and they're active in on that too so that wouldn't be covered by high watermark they wouldn't have any input on that or review they would okay, they but would. they didn't yeah they didn't okay. I, I I'm assuming what it um, well, when we discuss this is mm -hmm. that uh, the review that happened the, all the marks there's a like a little um, um, template that we mark what type of uh, services were requiring from an engineer. In the draft form, all the right boxes were checked, but when it went out, they were not all included. Okay. On that type of survey, and that's the first part of the survey, the property, um, that this is in reference to the corner searches. As far as the, um, uh, the survey that's needed to identify the underground utilities, that's separate. That, that is uh, uh, something we're going to have to do as we were... Um, anticipating above ground and, and mayor council this this uh project isn't a capped project either so okay it's not. this would be a reimbursable so. cost yes and it didn't hold up our um submittal for the 100 percent design or anything and um, we are currently in the stages of trying to coordinate those uh a meeting with fema and dhs um, department of homeland security to come down and do an on-site review for the 100 percent design so with all that they have on their plate right now with the emergencies, uh, we're still trying to uh, coordinate that meeting. Okay. Well, thank goodness it's not a CAPS project, but I, I'm getting really frustrated at all of these, um, all of these specialists and all these companies and all these engineers that we use, and they always screw up and forget things, and then we're on the hook for it. So uh, it, it's just getting really frustrated and nobody wants to take responsibility for it. 
I agree. Okay, so where do you guys want number 31? Consent or regular? Regular for information, I think. Okay. Thank you. Item number 32 is discussion on change order number 5 with General Hydronics for Cree Meadows Trail in the amount of $57,771.65, including gross receipts tax. Good morning, Rodney. And, and these guys are really receptive to increase in change orders this morning. Have you? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Good morning. Good morning, <laughs> counselors. So um, this change order is um, in reference to the Cree Meadows Trail Project. It covers uh, work that was previously completed and additional work. And as far as the work that was previously completed, um, the work was completed at the time due to time constraints, but with the process, it wasn't uh, pre-approved. Um, some of that work that was um, completed was during the project, it required a, a realignment. And due to that realignment, it required additional staking and it required additional excavation. Well, the process um, from DOT is, is so specific and um, everything has to, to be pre-approved. If you had to wait for the pre-approval, there's it just would slow down the project. I mean, um, it would delay it beyond, it would be very unreasonable. And so we completed the work to try to keep them going. Well, that project, that particular work was not pre-approved so there it wasn't um, covered under the reimbursement uh, process and so that work completed is a total of 30,000 plus GRT um, again it was staking um, extra, extra excavation and then there were three driveways while they were paving um, that were not they were originally not paved driveways but um, during the project, we thought it would be best to have them paved. So it was from the trail, um, connect between the trail and connecting to uh, Cree Meadows Drive. There were three driveways again while they were paving. We elected to have those paved. But again, with the process, it wouldn't be covered. You would have had to wait and, and uh, stop the project. They would have to come back and repave. Anyways, we're asking for that to be um covered by the village of Ridoso. And then the additional work, um, there is still uh, work to be completed on cleaning out of culverts, uh, cutting out a, a non-functioning um, culvert, um, extending and uh, excavating an extension of a culvert, and then remover, removal of a culvert. A couple of these culverts were not um, they were not visible during the design process. They were covered up with, in some areas, up to two feet of dirt. And so as they performed the excavation, they found out the culverts were there. Well, they're still, um, they're plugged, and so those need to be cleaned out. So the total for the additional work is 22,000 plus GRT, or 441 plus GRT, with the grand total of all that work coming out to 53,276,45 dollars excluding the GRT. Okay. And the money's coming from general fund, the additional. Okay. Any questions? Rodney, on those culverts that were buried and um, and packed full of dirt and so forth, so those basically weren't working. Was everything fine in that area? Or now we're going back and we're going to basically excavate that, that plugged culvert and install a new culvert. So is that necessary or were, were there issues that were occurring because of the condition of those culverts prior? As far as I'm aware, there were no issues prior. Um, that, that bar ditch had just silted in over years. Um, they're not going to be replacing the culverts they're just going to be cleaning them out to make sure that they're operational. So not only did they clean the area where the culvert was, but they cleaned out the entire bar ditch. And so now water can run down that. It was probably 
before running just right on the edge of the road instead of now where it's like two or three feet away of the road in the ditch like it should be. Uh, did that so answer your question? So, well, it, it does. So then could that be something rather than paying somebody else to do it? Is that something that our street department could do in house? Because I know they've done they do that all the time. I would imagine that they could do that. But I know that's yeah. They they've got the paving and all the other stuff that they're trying to get to. I don't know when they'd ever get to it. Okay. Okay. What well, do you want this on consent or regular? Tim, have you any more comments in terms of consent or regular on this item? I, you know, it's just another one of those that I, I'm just, I'm just frustrated with all these things that some of this from the way you described it, Rodney, is stuff that should have been quite evident um, in the process um, of, of going out and getting the, the project going and then coming back and saying, oh, well, we didn't realize I don't know. I, I'm again. It's another frustration. Put it in regular. Okay. Because I know I've walked that many times, and they've yeah. got areas dug out now that I had no idea because that yeah. stuff had been filled in for so many years. I thought that's the way it always was, and now then that they've actually re uh, ditched it, you know, cleaned it all out. Now you can see a lot of the transitions on the driveways and things like that that never were there before. And I think it was to, to do it right. But I think if you like item number 32, you're going to love item number 33. Because this yeah, is yeah. the oversight company that is uh, watching all this. And so we'll have it on regular item number 33 is discussion on additional services request number two with Bohan and Houston Inc. for construction management and construction inspection, Cree Meadows multi-use path and Bohannon, with Bohan and Houston in the amount of 12000 Seven hundred and forty dollars, no cents, including gross receipts tax, Rodney. Mayor and councilors, so again, as part as a uh, part of the NMDOT process, you're required to have a construction management on site while any work is being completed, and so um, this additional services request covers the cost to have uh, Bohannon Houston uh, supervise the construction. That the work is done correctly. Yes, sir. Not that. We should have had it figured into the original cost. Mayor. Yes. I, so if you have a project manager like that, you would think that they would, I, I just don't understand. We had to have one on the first project and now we're having to go back and do all this other stuff. I, I don't understand that. <clears throat> so he doesn't look and say, Hey, you should be doing it this way. So why do we have to have, why do we even have to have him? Well, go ahead, Ronnie. So it, it appears to me that all of the, the items that are either additional work or were, um, was previously completed. It's, it's really out of his control. I think it goes back more to the engineer. Um, you know, the engineer or when they engineered the project, not discovering the culverts was that caused an issue later on down the road when well, the construction manager was there, but I mean, he really couldn't had didn't have an impact on, you know, he, he didn't have it. They're making sure that the work that they're yes. doing is done to the specific codes and all of those things. The original engineer that designed it because the seven, the 12,000, is to pay them for their time, yeah. the additional days to inspect additional work that wasn't uh, originally planned. And but so, why was, wouldn't the engineer have to pay them? Why would we? Why do we have to pay? We the he's the expert. Does anybody have a comment on that, Mayor? It it uh, it appears that you know what Rodney is explaining is that the culverts were an unforeseen Very. condition that they didn't see. So, you know, as they got into construction, they, they recognized that there was an issue. And, um, you know, so it's just additional unforeseen work that caused the delay 
these services are for moving forward to you know get the additional work completed that was not part of the scope of work okay it's it's similar to like a rock clause <laughs> except for we don't have that in this one they didn't realize it was there you know uh, when they went out and walked the the perimeter or the, the project you know you could not see that's what i was saying when i've walked that thing many many times a lot of that was just flat and i didn't realize there was even a ditch there at one time and they're just saying that to do it right the ditch needed to be put back in and when they were in there looking at it that's when they found the buried culverts that the silt over all the years had filled it in and mr mayor i think if if it could be said a lot of this goes back it's historical if this was the same scenario two or three four years ago you go oh yeah okay but now as councillor coughlin and and, and councillor letterman are saying and some of us it's just a con constant coming back and i think that's what makes it well a lot difficult. of it is the amount of projects that we have going on oh absolutely you know like the bridge i mean that deals uh the scab that keeps getting knocked off over and over and over and the, the sewer project and all that that's why i brought up the deal is you know we have all these engineers on staff that are looking at these things and how come how watermark if they're in the ea department and that's what we were told the other day in that meeting well it's been a week ago that they make sure that all the environmentals and all that stuff are adhered to and how come they don't see it you know and then it, these things come up and we pay someone else to do it and so the answer is i don't have a good answer for it mayor, mayor you know in addition to that and i'm not trying to make excuses but um oftentimes you know the the previous records that that weren't you know we didn't have as built or good as built to be able to determine like for instance if if, if we had known or we had as built in place now that um you know before when they were designing this then they would have known Right. And that's that's one of the efforts that Eric and, and Capital Projects have been working on is making sure that we start to create a, a good um, database that has the as built that has the information so that when uh, projects are constructed in the future, they know what's in the ground already. And I, I totally understand, and I'm not ditzing on Rodney. It, it just, you know, you have a, a bar ditch, uh, a main road going down, and then you have a driveway, you would figure common sense to me that there's a culvert somewhere, but I, I'm no contractor. So I, I, I totally understand and here we go. So the $12,740 is to oversee the additional work on the, on the previous change order number five? Yes, that in the days. Correct. Okay. so. You got $12,740 to oversee $12,441 worth of work. To, really? To do, no, to oversee, it's the $22,441 on the right. additional work. Right. So we're paying almost $13,000 to oversee that $22,400. Unfortunately, yes. Jeez. And it, that's, Mayor, that's Mayor based off of pricing on an existing contract that we have with uh, Bohan and Houston. And the time to complete it, it's more related to the time to complete it. Yep. Put it on regular. Regular it is. Regular. But we still have these discussions all the time, you know, like why does the phone lines at the police department still go down yeah, over and over? So I just, I hadn't heard that much out of the mayor pro temp, so I wanted to get him wound up. Yeah. So. Yeah. And we'll move on to the library. Item number 34, discussion on Rudoso Public Library Collection Department Policy. Good morning, Diane. Good morning, Mayor Crawford, Council. Um, every five years, we have to renew our uh, collection development policy for the Department of Culture or Fires. It is one of the ways we guarantee to get the state grants and aid every year. Okay. Yeah. And uh, my advisory board approved it in May. Very good. Okay. Consent. Diane, Consent. are there many changes to this over the last one? I'm sorry, what was that? 
I was asking if there are many changes to the policy uh, over the last time this was done. No, there are minor changes. Okay. Okay. Item number 35, discussion on the FINRA Investor Education Foundation, the Foundation Grant Agreement number 2022, LDR-11, for the purpose of enhancing the library's personal finance <coughs> collections in the amount of $5,000. This is uh, a grant done by the Investor Education Foundation. Um, it's about finance and uh, they will reimburse us up to $5,000 for the items we purchase that have to do with personal finance. That is in the areas of debt management, budget, retirement, estate planning, those kinds of things. For the public? Yes. Yes. Okay. Program. So do you want to... Consent. Consent. Consent it? How do you advertise that? Uh, actually, they reached out to us. How do you talk to the public? How do people know about yeah. it? Uh, what we will do is we'll let them know that we are updating our finance. We will do it um, either in a post on Facebook or we will do it um, when we do another newsletter. We'll, well we're getting ready to do one, so we'll make sure that we put that in this one and that we you need to get it in there pretty quick because I'm already getting bugged already man they are getting really wicked on that Jillian and uh, we have an admin reg when you know certain items are due huh. but yes I, I think it's a good um, if you can submit um, you know to Yvonne a, an article on that I'll do that yep. okay. so we can That'd get it great. in there so we can get it in this month's newsletter. And I was just no. giving her a no. <laughs> They're like, you know, they I mean, call me, or do you have your stuff ready? Do you have your stuff ready? And it's like, what? well, the other one, I hadn't even got the other one yet. Have y'all? It, I just it got came in the mail yesterday. yesterday. Got it yesterday. Yeah. yeah. So they were whipping me it, like a brand it, new it's, pony. It's good to get us on, on track with that. I, I even forgot last month they, yeah. the deadline was a couple of days away, and, and Carrie said, you got your articles ready? And I said, oh, man, I completely forgot it was that time of the month. Yeah, she said she was going to ride me like sea biscuit until I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I liked your response, too. Yeah. <laughs> I was direct and to the point. I wasn't quite as elegant as a wordsmith over here, but I did get a point across. <laughs> Discussion on uh, lease agreement with Teresa Corn for Radio Tower property. Yes, sir, Mr. Tim. Ms. Rainer, counselors. So this is a, a renewal of a two-year agreement um, for the property in Rudosa Downs on which the FCC chartered um, tower stands that we inherited when we got the radio station. Um, and this is something that was discussed um, in closed session and it was agreed that we would move forward with the lease agreement again for two years um, while exploring um, other options in, in terms of redundancy for the tower. Um, she is, uh, Ms. Corn is requesting an increase of $50 a month um, to $700 a month um, for the duration of the lease. Okay. Any questions? Consent? Consent. 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 Okay. Thank you. Tim, Tim, you were very photogenic on Legends of uh, New Mexico. Oh, well, I missed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I watch that all the time. <laughs> yep. When was that? Um, it was about three weeks ago, and it was on public television, and it was about Lincoln. I'm still and, not getting royalties from that. And they were <laughs> and they were interviewing you as part of the program. Uh, they must be well. running out of content, because that was like five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't want to say anything, but you look very young. Oh, in that <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right. And, Ron, do you have anything else that we're going to be putting on some boards and commissions? Mayor, for on the regular meeting on the 14th, uh, we'll have our, on consent, we'll have our, of course, our uh, regular items. We'll have a ratification, and this is the emergency facilities land use agreement with the U.S. Forest Service. Mayor, that was for the use of the helibase. And then we'll have uh, introduction of uh, village, new village employees or promotions. We'll have a presentation on the uh, Healing America, America's Heroes Organization, Eddie, Eddie Kane and Deborah J. Hig, Higdon. Uh, they reached out to Councilor uh, E.B. and uh, in staff on that. We'll have a new appointment uh, to the Lodgers Tax Board. And I don't know the mayor's looking also at a... And one to the cemetery. Cemetery, okay. 
and then we'll uh, at that and that's what we have at this time Mayor under the uh, manager's report, you know as promised we'll have a presentation on, on ride Rio Doso, Aspen fest, you know, those are the next two uh, major events that we have planning that are, are coming up and then um, also I'll be giving a, an updated presentation on the housing initiatives that we're working on Okay Anything else we can think of? Um, is, We're is, short a library board member too. Okay. Yep. I just haven't been looking that hard. Uh, Can I have closed session? Yep. We do. Yep. Oh, we do have closed session planned for today as well, and I do got two items. Yep. Anything else, anyone? Okay. Then we will. Um, Go into closed session. If I can get a motion, please. Mr. Mayor, I move that we moved into closed session for discussion of limited personnel matters, citing 1051H2 NMSA1978, and discussion subject to the attorney-client privilege pertaining to the threatened or pending litigation in which the village of Rio Doso is or may become a participant, citing 1051H7 NMSA1978, and finally discussion of the purchase, acquisition, and or disposal of real property and or water rights by the village of Rio Dosa, citing 1015 1H8 and MSA 1978. Any action taken as a result of the closed session will be brought back into open session, and I so move. Second. Discussion? Okay, now how are you going to get uh, Tim and, uh, are you going to call them, Tim and Susan on? Okay, so y'all, I guess he's going to call you on the cell phones? Okay. okay. We'll, we'll have uh, two reach out to both the counselors on the phone by cell. Okay. All right, so uh, roll, call. Uh, uh, roll call. Roll call, please. Councilor Jackson? Aye. Councilor Hooker? Aye. Councilor Coughlin? Aye. Councilor Salas? Aye. Councilor Lutterman? Aye. Thank you. All right, we'll be calling you guys quickly. And you didn't think we was going to get done. I know. I thought we were going to do that. Security contract. Security contract. 